the actual definition of heart failure because there's varying levels of uh-huh. heart failure. So <laughs> where, where <laughs> yeah, yeah. we might be here a while, Paul. <laughs> okay. Go for it. Yeah, okay. So heart failure basically is what it says on the tin. It is a failing heart. The heart has two jobs, which is to contract and relax. Contract and relax. That's literally all it needs to do with a few caveats. Now, if it doesn't contract as vigorously as it should do, that's now called heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Ejection fraction is our clever term for the percentage of blood that leaves the heart every time the heart contracts. You'd think it would be 100%. You'd be wrong. It's never 100%. It's usually around 60. 60 it's usually, yeah, for a yeah. male, it's 60%. That's how the heart is designed. Okay, The heart is not designed to eject all of the blood out every time a heart contracts. A 60% is your golden number. Uh, females, similar sort of number, maybe just a little bit less. Now, if, you, if you've had a heart attack or you've had another problem that has affected the muscle, and it's not just a lack of blood, there's lots of other things that we'll get to in a mo, that causes a problem with the contractility of the heart. So you reduce your ejection fraction. Now, for me, as a heart failure specialist, most of the patients I see have an ejection fraction of 35% or less or 20%. Or I had a, someone who was still working as a labourer on a building site who was at 10%. It was incredible, <laughs> this bloke. But it's, it's amazing how the ejection fraction doesn't actually clearly define what your symptoms are going to be like. So, you know, on one hand, I've got someone who's had the most unhealthy heart I've ever seen. This is a genetic condition, you know, he was born with it. Uh, but at down to 10%, I mean, it was terrifying to watch. Um, whereas I've got patients who are at 40% whose life really is blighted. They just can't do the stuff that they used to do. Now, why is that? Is that because the, the, this bloke here has worked on a building site all his life and he's fit and he's, you know, robust and he's been putting scaffolding up and, you know, he's, you know, had a great reserve in the body so he can handle it. And maybe the person with 40% who's blighted now just doesn't have that reserve in the rest of their body. Who knows? But that's, that's heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Now, you go to the gym, yeah? I've seen you at the gym. I'm pretty sure you go there occasionally. Now, if you just do bicep curls all day, every day, at some point, you're going to look like Popeye, okay? I'll take my top off and demonstrate, but <laughs> I, it's a tight shirt. Now, that muscle gets big and it gets what we call hypertrophied. When it gets hypertrophied, it gets a bit stiff. It doesn't relax quite as vigorously as it should do. Now, if the heart contracts okay, but it doesn't relax as well as it should do, that's heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. It means it's still contracting. It's doing that job, but it takes a bit longer to relax. And if it takes a bit longer to relax... Takes a bit longer to fill up as well. Takes a bit longer to fill up. But as a result of that, it fails and you get shorter breath. That's your main symptom from it. Or you'll get swelling on your ankles. You'll develop a heart failure syndrome, even though the contractility of the heart is okay. What's the leading cause of stiff heart in this country, of what we would call diastolic dysfunction? High blood pressure. What's the heart's job? The heart's job is to ju- just to produce blood pressure and keep the blood going around the body. And if you have high blood pressure, the heart is having to work harder to do it. That's going to the gym and doing bicep curls. Over time, gives you stiff muscle. Right. So you've got you, you've you've got different types of heart failure. In those are your two main classic types. And then talking specifically about those with a reduced ejection fraction, commonest cause damage through heart attack. That's your commonest cause. Then you've got genetics, what we would call a dilated cardiomyopathy. That's just an inherent. You were born with it. Weakness of the muscle of the heart. Uh, is there some, any way to get that checked, or is that so it's not worth checking? It would be worth checking if you had symptoms, uh, so sh- shortness of breath, or if you have a first degree relative. You know, if your parents or your brothers or sisters had a diagnosis of cardiomyopathy, then you should actually get a standardized letter from their cardiologist passed on to you telling you to go to your GP and have an ECG and an echo. And quite a lot of people I see, you know, present with just that. It's yeah. just screening because uh, a relative has this condition. And can you have a quick look at this one? 